Okay, but now it's time to say, let's not turn it on, let's take it apart, as my friend Dave Jones would say from Australia. So let's get into this thing and see what makes it tick. Now, first of all, when you're pulling radios apart like this, it's always a very good idea to unplug the battery because you don't want to short anything out. So there's the battery that comes with it. And as I say, that's just a regular two cell balance connector. Don't like these wires. They have that really stiff plastic insulation. So as I say, first thing I do, throw this in the bin, put a decent battery in there. Uh, but at least they do provide you with a battery if you want to use one. And case is held together with several little Phillips screws. These are actually very long screws, I must say. So, uh, yeah, I've sped this bit up for you, apart from this little bit. It gets your hands rather tired trying to undo these screws. Same arms cramped up after undoing all those screws. Let's hope there's nothing else I have to take off. Let's have a look here. Huh? It appears that these are actually just catching, capturing the plastic underneath. So I'm going to have to loosen off these little screws. Here we go. I've loosened off those the little capture nuts on those switches. <laughs> And let's have a look at all the techie goodness inside. If I can actually get, oh goodness me, that switch has to come off there, go onto there. Same with this one. All the techie goodness inside. Look at this. Ooh, there you go. You don't see that every day, do you? Right, let's take a tour around inside this little baby. Surprisingly, it's got a battery back up in here. I think that probably for the real time clock. So there'll be a clock in there that keeps a track of the time and dates. Not for the memory, because that's stored on, to, on flash memory. So this will be a little backup battery, just so the clock keeps running, so it knows exactly what the time and day is, probably for the data logging through the micro SD card, which is somewhere around on the other board, I think. Okay, now what have we got? Obviously, this is the main logic board here. We've got a processor. I have to put my granny glasses on to see what that is. It's an ARM processor, according to the instructions. It's an STM32 f 205 so it's not it's not a high powered arm it's a 32-bit processor but it's one of the microcontroller series uh, there's a there's a range of them they go from i think the m is there an m0 through to m4 or f0 through to f4 and they are uh, quite grunty compared to the chip that's in the what is it the turnergy the turnergy uses an 8-bit processor and it, it ambles along at a reasonable crack but these processors here well it's like comparing a truck to a bicycle these are far gruntier so you can do a lot more with this than you can with the Turnergy. Although, hey, the, the Turnergy or Flysky 9X has been a brilliant radio, and I admire it for its elegance. This is just taking things to the next level, of course, with such a powerful processor. Now, let's have a look at the radio frequency board, which is over here. This is the new board that Freesky are calling something XJT. Here it is. And what's it got on it? Well, it's not that different. There's... Um, a couple of processors there, a couple of little chips there. One will be the RF chip and electrolytic, some power components down here. Yeah, I'll take a closer look at that and I'll post some information on, uh, on the description of this video telling you more about this because I'm at the workshop at the moment, don't have internet connection, so I can't look up a lot of these bits and pieces. But it's probably using the same Texas, well, it must be using the same Texas instrument chips that it uses in the existing system but there you go that's the RF module unfortunately unfortunately it seems to be hardwired there's a little blob of hot glue that holds the antenna wire up to here so if you're going to put another antenna on you're gonna to have to undo that what I think I will probably do with mine is I will put an SMA connector up here on the top or a reverse polarized SMA connector in the transmitter and I'll put in a fly lead down to there resolder that now if you're not a not an ace solderer and you're a bit worried then I probably wouldn't do it yourself but it's a tri fairly trivial task to make the antenna removable which I certainly will be doing on mine. Now let's have a look over here at the wiring on these little pots and things. Now these are the flippy paddle pots and you see heat shrunk, nice heat shrink with support and the wiring itself is quite nice. Everything's done through these little connectors here on the board so that's nice. Over here we've got Let's go back to the main board again. 
We've got fairly big wiring looms between the, the backboard and the front board. And the, again, it's all done through these nice little connectors. The quality of the soldering on the PC boards, excellent. No complaints whatsoever there. Let's have a look at the stick units, see what they've done with the stick units. We've got, okay, the stick wiring is, yeah, that's all right. It's cable tied down here. So, and there's support built in through these blocks on the pots. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be much flexing going on here where the wires enter the pots with normal movement, so I wouldn't expect to see that fracture or fail. Wiring on the switches here, it's all heat shrunk, brilliant. That's much better than on the early 10G 9Xs where it was pretty much just soldered and left to bend and flap around in the breeze. That's excellent, top quality there. Um, it looks really well laid out. And of course there is a little speaker up here for the voice synthesis. So yes, one, one really can't complain about the quality of build in this radio. It is really rather good. I must say I am impressed. It is certainly not a cheap budget radio from the build quality perspective. And if, I guess if you're gonna pay this sort of money, you expect a decent radio. And in fact, that looks to be what FreeSky are delivering here. The, the quality of this build is truly world class. It's as good as any of the big brand names that I've seen and a lot better than some of their cheaper radios. One thing that people don't quite appreciate is when you buy yourself a really cheap Futabra or JR radio, like the four channel or the six channel, quite often they're really bad. They're, they're made to a price and the quality is really not much better than some of the stuff like the Turnergy. So it's really good to see such great quality in this radio. It's, it's really built well. I am impressed. Now, I mentioned about the little detent issue. I can obviously solve that because if we look on the side here, you see there's a little metal, wipe, little metal thing there. I can just increase the tension on that and I'll probably get a much firmer detent in the mid position. So yeah, it's nothing big to change that. So there you go. That's the guts, people. That's the guts. Really, it's, it's another elegant, elegant design, just like the Turnergy, because it just has one process that does pretty much all the hard work. I notice also, just looking again, it's got a little switch mode power supply down here, so it's not going to flatten your battery. If you use a three cell LiPo, you're not gonna waste a whole lot of your battery as heat. It's got a very efficient power switching system in there, which means it's, uh, it's gonna use all the energy from your battery to produce radio energy and run the radio, not just waste it creating heat as some of the earlier radios do. And in fact, the Turnergy 9X has a linear regulator. This has got a switch mode, so the Turnergy will waste more energy in the form of heat. Brilliant. Um, just look, see if I can see those ball bearings. Yes, there are ball bearings in the gimbals. Brilliant, love it, excellent, top quality. Okay, so there you have it. We pulled it apart and looked inside and it's all very good inside. Lots of quality goodness inside this radio. It is every bit the equal in terms of build quality to anything I've seen from Futaba or JR or Spectrum or High Tech. And uh, so you can buy this without worrying about wires falling off or other problems that have plagued some of the earlier 9X radios and things. You know, this seems to be really, really built to a fine standard of quality. That's excellent because you're paying a bit more for it. It's not cheap. I don't know. I've seen them listed online for 200, just over $200 or something. So they're not cheap radio. I mean, 50 bucks, $200. But although you've got to put a module on this one, remember, and a receiver. So you're looking really, when, and a battery. So it's really $100, $200. Is it twice the radio? Well, you'll be able to tell in the next set of videos or in some of the future videos because I'll be looking more deeply at the techie side and actually using the damn thing. I'm going to take it away now. I'm going to throw it on the oscilloscope. We'll check out the latency because they're claiming super low latency for this thing. Seven milliseconds of latency. That's really, really good. One of the problems with these radios and the plug-in module in the back is the latency. Now, even with a really, really well-designed system, you're going to get latency that's no better than the old FM systems, which was up to 20 milliseconds, maybe even more, sometimes up to 30 milliseconds of latency. 
So this seven milliseconds, that's you know quite a bit better. But we'll check it. Is it on par with the spectrum and and something like the JR here, which also claims low latency? I think these are 11. I'm not sure. I'll check 11 or 8 or something. But I'll check. We'll put them all side by side. Whoops. There you go. We'll put them all side by side and we'll compare them. And we'll also compare the high tech Aurora 9 because a lot of people have said, where's the rest of the high tech Aurora 9 review? Well. The thing I really wanted to do was latency testing. So if I'm going to set up to test the latency of this, I'll test everything I've got. We'll do some comparisons. You can see for yourself. And one thing I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention before is when you're using these receivers, the X8R, this has a spectrum feature. It has the equivalent of model match, apparently. So you can assign every receiver a number from 1 to 60 odd, according to your model memories. And then if you try and fly a model with the wrong memory selected, it just won't work. It'll complain at you and you won't be able to fly the model because a lot of people, including myself, at some time in their hobby career have crashed a model because you flew with the wrong setting on your transmitter. And as a result, the ailerons are reversed or something happened and you end up crashing the model. That can't happen. Can't happen if you set it up with one of these new receivers. Don't think it works with the older receivers. I'll check it though. I'll check and find out for you. I don't know what spectrum I'm going to do either because they claim patents on this model match stuff. So, hmm, I think FreeSky probably got around it in a rather clever way, but I'll check it and find out for you. So that's it. Um, so far, I'm really liking this radio, as Ellie Shenmao would say. And I haven't found much wrong with it, except the few little things I pointed out, the little neck strap attachment and uh, the lack of a removable antenna, the nickel metal hydride battery instead of a lithium. But hey, these are really, really minor things, way small things, nothing really to worry about. So. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've got comments, or if you've got a question for the next video, put them on the comments on this video, and I'll do my best to answer it. As I say, coming up, some more techie stuff, but also I'm gonna throw it in a plane and fly it. I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I'm actually gonna use one of my 3D profiles, which have way, way big control surfaces and very large throws, because no better way to test one of these than on a really responsive model, and 3D profiles are really responsive. Because another thing I need to check too is resolution. I haven't talked much about resolution, and FreeSky don't make a big noise about it in their product brochures, so I wonder what the resolution is. I'll look up the specs of the ARM. I'll tell you down here what it's likely to be. I can't remember what the ARM processor's digital to analog converter is, but I know that in this radio, it's a 10-bit, which means basically 1,024 positions are available uh, on the servos or on the output to the servos. The trend has been to increase resolution. I think most of the new radios now have 2046, 2048, 1024, 2048. <laughs> Got to do the math. 2048 positions, which is 11 bits. Now, I don't know if they've gone to 12 bits on this, which would be 4096 positions, but I know a lot of new servos have the ability to cope with 12 12 bit precision, 4096 steps. A lot of the Savox servos do. So, if you're into high precision flying, the precision of your transmitter, the resolution, can be important. Let's check it out, put it on the bench, and I'll find out what it really is. As I said, thank you for watching. I better get on and do some more stuff now and get a plane ready to fly this thing in. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.